The Foff Grand Dream Hoop for the Foff Creative Icon 2 is quite an amazing hoop. Some of you have this and some of you might purchase this separately, but if you have it in your collection, it's a fun hoop to explore and learn what it can do. So first off, it is a 360 by 350 hoop. Now, some of the designs that you might have picked designed for this hoop will come up automatically ready to use. And the clue is that you see this kind of middle section that is grayed out. And I'm gonna explain all the parts of this hoop so you understand it. But first off, if you ever pull up a design, just a random design, and for some reason, you know how it sometimes it comes in kind of maybe up in this corner somewhere, and it you see this part, this middle gray buffer zone, somehow the machine thinks that you should put this hoop on, but might not be what you were planning to do. Just go ahead and choose the hoop that is proper for the design size. I have on occasion had designs that will come in kind of sideways and then it thinks this is the hoop. It also, if you just bring in one gigantic design, this hoop is not intended for one design. When we touch this design that I've actually pulled in from the MySoNet library, this design actually has a, it is two parts. And that's exactly what you need to know about this hoop. So as I show you this edge here, you see that that is a bracket like you're used to seeing but there's also a bracket on this side. So when you actually are embroidering, now as I kind of pretend to attach it here, this still embroiders in that first kind of right side of the hoop. Then somewhere halfway through the design when that side stops and is finished, a message will come up to tell you to turn your hoop. So you literally take the hoop off, turn your hoop around and reattach it to the opposite side. The machine knows to stitch this flipped so to realign it in this right side, which is now the opposite side and flipped 180 degrees. So the machine is smart. What you cannot do is take a design that sits over the gray middle buffer zone. If I may call it that, that means that you can take a design that fits in this side by itself and do another design on this side by itself and set up a design to do in this hoop. And you can do that. Now, for any reason you pull up a design like this and you notice it's actually two parts, you can go ahead and delete one of these parts away from your screen and just do a regular hoop. So you then would be twisting it, you know, and rehooping it, use your precise positioning to realign it. And speaking of that, you will be needing to know how to use precise positioning because if you think about how your embroidery machine works, if you're embroidering all on this side of the hoop, what's happening to the fabric on this side? It's kind of getting pulled towards it. That pull compensation is a technical term, but what it's doing is this fabric is getting pulled towards where all the stitching is going. So when you go and actually turn it, the fabric where the machine thinks it should be might have moved or shifted. So before you start stitching the second part, you might need to actually realign or readjust using precise positioning to get it to actually connect where it's supposed to. And these designs will leave you like a little uh, corner mark for you to use to realign and so it does turn out perfect. So you will need to watch the video on precise positioning to really figure out how to do that. I'm not going to do that in this particular video, but you will find yourself also benefiting from using the, the hoop clips that came with the machine. I know a lot of people just like have this little bag and don't know what to do with it, but when you take a look at these, hoop clips. And if you have fabric in here, can you see how long these edges are? There's a point where as you tighten the screw, and there's one here and then one at the opposite end back here, as you tighten it, where does your fabric get the tightest? It gets tightest in the corners. So along these edges, not to say that they're not holding your fabric, but they definitely are gonna, I mean, I can like pull them apart. They're gonna have a little gap in there. 
So these hoop clips are designed to, to sit right in these little notches. So they're near where the bracket is, so you can go one on each side and squeeze those edges together. You can put them at the lower edge and the top edge and then come over here and clip these edges. And I highly recommend the hoop clips for, of course, this hoop, but don't forget about it on your hoops that are of the larger size. I, you don't need these for the smaller hoops. The, that usually helps hold that fabric nice and firm. But when it comes to the bigger hoop, these are gonna be key to your success. So it's gonna kind of pinch the fabric and stabilizer together. Now, you heard me say it. When all possible, put fabric and stabilizer in your hoop. Use the right amount of stabilizer. I start with two layers minimum. And depending if I'm working on stretchy fabric, a cutaway stabilizer. If it's a woven fabric, I probably will have ironed onto the back of it that fusible interfacing and then use stabilizer on, um, with it. So I'm hooping all those layers for guaranteed best results for elimination of puckers or any extra pulling of that fabric as that design stitches. So uh, the hoop clips are ideal. Keep those close by with your grand dream hoop. So once again, if you have a design that you wanna stitch in this hoop, you will be able to bring it in. But if it's one big design, you do have the option in the MySoNet software to divide it for this hoop, like cut it in half. The software will do it in a smart way and find you two parts and pieces. You just can't pull in one big design and lay it over there and think the machine's gonna split it for you. You do need software for that. Remember the MySoNet software software has a 30-day free trial option. So if you don't have that software but want to use that feature, you can go try it out and see that it works for you. By the way, that software you can install on either a Mac or a PC, which I love that feature. All right. Um, speaking of designs that you can get for this hoop, in the MySoNet library, if you've got the software subscription, the library has tons of designs in here. Um, uh, recently, I've noticed they've kind of categorized these, and I found in the new designs for February, these were the bigger designs, so I pulled one of these in. But you can sort by width and height, and you can also sort by uh, different categories that you might look up. So that's kind of a fun way to get more designs. If you don't have a library subscription, you can actually just buy the designs. So you don't have to have a subscription to use them. You can purchase them just like you would be purchasing any design. And then you'll have tons of designs for your grand dream hoop. So I hope you, if you have this hoop, get it out, give it a try, um, practice. Yeah, that first one's all gonna really get you comfortable with how it's gonna look on the screen and how the messages come up and get you practicing using your hoop clips. Check out all of our free videos we have done on the FOP Creative Icon 2 where we will help you master this machine from start to finish.